Welcome to Boyle's Law. Robert Boyle stated the inverse relationship between the pressure and the volume as a gas law. Boyle's Law states that at a constant temperature, the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. It means that if the temperature is kept constant and the mass of a gas is constant, then the volume is inversely proportional to its pressure. Or simply we can say that if we increase the pressure, the volume of a gas goes down. And if we decrease the pressure, the volume of a gas goes up. Remember that the temperature and the mass of a gas must here kept constant. So the mathematical proof is here. As you can see here that the volume is inversely proportional to pressure where the temperature which is denoted by a constant K. So here we can write this equation as PV is equal to K where P is the pressure of a gas, V is the volume of a gas and K is the constant temperature. Those law can also be stated as for a fixed mass of a gas, the product of the pressure and the volume remains constant at a constant temperature. It means that the volume changes with the change in the pressure, but the product that is PV remains constant. For two states of a gases at a constant temperature, let volume of a gas is V1 at a pressure P1. Then P1 V1 is equal to constant. If the pressure changes to P2, then the volume will changes to V2, such that the product will remain constant. P2 V2 is equal to constant. Now comparing these two equations, we can write P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Graphically, a plot of volume against a pressure of a gas at a constant temperature is a hyperbola. As you can see here, the graph, which is hyperbola, shows the relationship between the pressure and the volume. And this is the inverse relationship between the pressure and the volume. Experimental Verification of Boyle's Law Consider a gas consisting in a cylinder fitted with a movable and a weightless piston. Let's the initial volume of a gas is 24 cubic decimeter and the pressure on it is 1 atmosphere. Having no weight on it and only the air is exerting pressure on it. Now friends, place one weight on a piston. The pressure will become stable. And it can be observed that the volume is reduced to half. As you can see here, the volume is 12 cubic decimeter. Similarly, by putting more and the more weights on a piston, the pressure goes on increasing. While on the other hand, the volume goes on decreasing to the same extent to which the pressure increases. Simply, we can say that when the pressure on the gas is low, the gas particles move freely. The volume over here is very high. So when the pressure on the gas is increased, so the gas particles squeeze to a much smaller area. Over here, the pressure is much high. The volume over here is very low. So as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. It means that there is an inverse relationship between the pressure and volume. Let's take an example. A tire with a volume of 11.41 liters read 44 psi on the tire gauge. What is the new tire pressure if you compress the tire and its new volume is 10.6 liter? So here we have a data that the pressure P1 is 44 psi and the volume V1 is 11.41 liters. Whereas the pressure P2 is not given here and we have to find out this pressure. Whereas the volume V2 that is equal to 10.6 liter. So by applying the Boyle's law, 
P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2, we can easily find out the final pressure that is P2. So by putting all these values, we get 47 PSI. So the final pressure on the tire is 47 PSI. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe Digital Chemistry.